as always, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Fresco, you're, you're more than welcome to stay. In fact, I prefer it if you did, so we could talk about everything. Um, okay, so good evening. This is Brilliance in the Basics. We're going to go over PvP builds. Last week, we covered PvE builds um, uh, with one of our clan members, Midget. And um, so today we'll just go over some PvPs. Um, I'm not going to do anything crazy in depth. I'm going to try and make this a shorter one. And um, basically just cover what I think most people should run in general. And then for we can go over specific builds around certain exotics. Uh, I mainly will just cover mine. Um, we'll talk about one of my good buddies. He unfortunately is not here right now and then we will also discuss uh, your fresco your exotic that you like to use um, so first things first put back on my normal stuff <laughs> sorry I'm not very knowledgeable into the game that's fine <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna basically talk around around your character and then uh, if you want to include your audio you're more than welcome um, okay so as far as basic what you should go into the crucible using if you have the ability if you have the RNG if you have whatever you need to have um, stats wise I would primarily focus on uh, for Titans I'm gonna start with Titans I run 60 mobility it just what it happens to be I can care less if it was 50 40 60 um, I like it for strafing I Obviously, it's not tied to any class ability of mine, and uh, I don't really care for jumping too high. But it's nice for strafing back and forth in gunfights. Uh, resilience. I, I recommend people run a minimum for this season, for Season of the Chosen, running a minimum of 50. If you can run 60 or 70, I think that's perfect. I run 60, I think it's more than enough for me for general PvP play. Imagine was 90. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, there's certain builds where it's not bad, but even even if you're running, you know, like Titan's Ramparts and stuff like that, I don't think you really need to run more than than 60 or 70. You know what I mean? Um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second, because yours is based around shields. Um, but if you utilize the right weapons, you don't need to spec so much into it. Um obviously for recovery i highly recommend that anyone who's watching this and will watch it get as close to 100 as you can you know i think running 90 to 100 is really good 100 is perfect 90 is great 80 is is good anything lower than that i think that you will need would be some some modification to get it higher yeah, it's a modification. Uh, recoveries yeah, recovery's huge. Um, there's a lot of gunfights you get into, and um, you know you might not have got the first shot. You got to poke behind cover again, and that 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 health regen can be the difference between you losing that fight or winning that fight. You know what I mean? And when you're doing stuff, getting into comp, you know lives matter. As you start as you start losing lives, it, it makes a difference in the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, discipline right now especially on stasis you know grenades are um, a little busted um, I think if you can run 50 resilience or higher I'm not sorry 50 discipline or higher that's great I'm at 48 it bugs me I wish it was straight 50 or straight 40 because being that close does me no good to 50 but I wish it was um but I think 50 discipline or is is plenty. I'm not super grenade heavy. I have a right now I'm using a grenade launcher with Dead Man's Tail, so I got enough grenades from that alone. Um, I primarily right now, if I'm on my stasis, I mainly use cold snap just so I could free somebody and get the damage boost. Um, <coughs> but there's mods that we can talk about that help boost your grenade. Um, regen intellect you know everyone's different 
Uh, this is another one of those situations where I wish this was 80 intellect instead of 78. It bugs me. If I get another armor piece that adds two to that, then I'll put it on. But, um, you know, intellect, I think you should run that as high as you can. I don't think it should be your priority. I think recovery should be your priority. And in, in some classes, whether, you know, your hunter, you know, your mobility would be more of a priority. But you don't really want your intellect lower than I'd say you don't want it lower than 40 you can get it higher than that 50 60 um, you know that can make a big difference because seconds equal minutes and yeah. doing something like comp or trials the person who gets their super first can can turn a whole game around you know what I mean there, there's been instances where people in trials are are getting beat and then you know your team you might get be getting beat you get your super first and then you turn that round around and then and then you just everyone starts to feel better about it and then you start winning your games so getting your super first can be a, a big deal maybe not so much in 6v6 but for sure in something like comp or trials elimination you know what I mean um, and strength this to me kind of varies on your class for Titans, I like to run 50 strength or higher, um, especially on Stasis Titan, because I like to use the Sugar Strike as mobility. So I want to get that back as soon as I can, because I like to use it to get around the map, to, to get out of a dust field grenade, to get out of a, a crappy situation, right? <laughs> Allow me to regroup with myself, reset, get back out there. Um, so I run 50. I'd recommend anybody run 50 or higher. As long as they can maintain that 100 recovery and that 50 to 60 resilience. As far as hunters, um, I think the resilience stays the same. I still, if you can, I run 50 resilience. But your mobility is more of a priority. I run, you know, as close to 100 mobility as you can and as close as 100 recovery as you can. Um, your, your grenades are, to me, in the same boat. Uh, shatter dive got nerfed, so there's no point in running, you know, 100 discipline and just shatter diving everything in the world. Um, and intellect, same difference. Uh, for your strength, strength to me on hunters isn't as nearly as much of a priority because, you know, you have a dodge, a uh, gambler's dodge that you can utilize to get your melee back in an instant. And uh, <clears throat> so you don't really need to spec into strength, in my opinion, as a, um, as a hunter. Uh, for warlocks, um, you know, your class ability is tied to your recovery. And I already said, you know, if you're doing PvP, you should be running 100 recovery for sure. And especially as a warlock. That should be just your bread and butter. Because that's going to give you your rifts, that's going to heal you, it's going to heal your teammates, that's going to empower you, empower your teammates, whatever. Um, and then I would also run as high of intellect as you can. And those would be the two that I, you know, peek into for uh, Warlock. Unless you're doing something like Top Tree, uh, Dawn, where you're wanting to absorb your grenades all the time, then maybe put some more into Discipline so that you can utilize that movement ability and, and that, that uplift the heat rises right um so obviously the stats can can vary based on what you're trying to do if that makes sense <laughs> um weapons in my opinion it's it's whatever you want to run you know um i don't believe you have to run the meta to be good you can run whatever you want and you can be good at it and if you're good at it you can you can turn it into something um you know, 120 hand cannons right now are big. Fell Winter's Lie right now is big. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of weapons that are that are big, but you don't have to use that. You know, if you want to use a, um, I don't know what's a. If you want to use the Cerberus Plus One assault rifle, use it. Use it however you want, and and just develop with it practice with it get better with it and then you can you can do really well with most of the exotics as long as it's what you want to do <clears throat> nothing's making you use felwinter's lie and a 120 hand cannon you know what i mean 
Right. Yeah. Um, I personally, I run Dead Man's Tail because I think it's a great scout rifle. Um, I grew up, you know, ranching and stuff like that, so it just has that aesthetic that I like. And I use a grenade launcher with it, but the shrubs break, so I can break their shields, quick swap, and one tap them. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty nasty setup, especially if I'm on, if I'm on point using it. If I'm not using this, I'm mainly using a uh, bottom dollar and a chaperone, which is more into the um, into the meta side in a way. It, it's the 120 hand cannon, which is really good, uh, but a lot of people don't use slug shotguns, and um, uh, I might get hate for this one, but I think it's because people are lazy. <laughs> Uh, you know they don't want to. They don't want to aim. They don't get their headshots. But it's also, uh, I shouldn't say lazy, but but slug shotguns are very punishing if you miss your headshots. You know they got good range, and to compensate for that range, you have to get a headshot for a one-shot kill, unless you're charged with light uh, or weapons of light for bubble, right? So. I don't even think Charger Light will one-shot them. I think that'll make them really weak. But I personally run the Chaperone because I enjoy slug shotguns. I enjoy the Chaperone. I like the look of it. I like the Russian aesthetic of it. Um, and I just like feeling like the Terminator. Or I like feeling like freaking John Wayne <laughs> flipping my right <rifle laughs> around. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's not meta by any means. But that's just because not everyone uses it, right? But it's a really, really good setup. The hand cannon is the most meta thing in this. And if I'm not using that, I could use my palodrome. I got a scout rifle to use with it. That's really good. Um, you know, I can I can swap out a lot of things depending on what the map is. I have a posterity that I use too um, for shorter range maps, right? So, but I'm right now, I'm using Dead Man's Tail with the Grenade Launcher. And because I'm using that, I made my build based around those things. So, on my mark, I'm using, uh, you know, obviously these mods will change with based on whatever you want. But I'm using Outreach because it reduces my melee cooldown whenever I use my class ability. And we talked about how I like using Shipper Strike as mobility movement. So whenever I pop my shield... I get some some melee energy back, and then obviously I'm using I'm using uh, taking charge as well, so that when I pick up an uh, orb of light or orb of power, I become charged with light. Um, on my legs, I run grenade launcher scavengers. I run um, traction 100% for anyone on a console. Xbox, PlayStation, you need to run traction. If you're using a controller, you need to use traction, for sure. In, in PvP, that's a huge difference. And with crossplay coming up, you know, around, if we play with PC players, you're going to be at a significant disadvantage just on that alone. You're already at disadvantage if you're not running it on console, but on PC, they get to whip around and turn around real quick. You're not going to be able to. So, at least this gives you a, a I wouldn't say an equal leveling ground, but a, a, a better playing field. That's the best way to say it. Um, and then I also run high energy fire. So, high energy fire is while I'm charged with light, I gain a bonus to weapon damage, and each defeat of the combatant consumes one stack of charge of light. Uh, I usually get two charges of light, so that's two kills with high energy fire. On my chest piece, you know, it, it kind of depends on what you want to do. Right now, the season is with the scout rifle, so I use unflinching scout rifle. And the only reason I'm using arc resistance is so I can open up uh, powerful friends. The only reason I'm using that is because um, I don't have radiant light. If I had radiant light, I wouldn't need to run this arc mod because I'd run radiant light on another piece of armor but I'm using um, 
powerful friends with the arc mod and the arc mod is just a proc it and powerful friends is when it, when you become charged with light your nearby allies become charged with light if they're not already and it gives me a nice 20 mobility buff so that's a really good one to help your your team out which is huge in you know something like trials or comp if i can make you charge of light because i picked up light that means your weapons are going to do more damage if you're running the same setup i am Uh, Karma, are you muted? No. Okay, I can slightly hear my echo <sighs> in the background. Um, just so you know. I'm not saying you have to, but I, I can hear it through your TV or something. Um, okay, so for Scout Rifle, I'm running Scout Rifle Loader to assist with my reloads since I'm using Dead Man's Tail. And then to also help with that quick swap, I'm using um, Scout Rifle Dexterity. Uh, if you're really wanting to be melee heavy, if you're on arc mods, you can run, uh, you know, a momentum transfer, causing damage to your grenades, reduces melee cooldown. If you're on a solar, do I have a solar piece in here? Yes, I do. If you're running solar arms and you want to run grenade heavy, then you can run uh, uh, impact, in, uh, impact induction, which is causing damage with your melee attacks, reduces your grenade cooldown. I use this on my hunter. Because the melee is those shurikens or it's smoke, you know what I mean? And it's really easy to chuck it out there and, and damage people. And then I can get my grenade cooldown moving. And then for my helmet, just to complement the build, I'm still running uh, scout rifle targeting. Two of them. Uh, sometimes I would run hands-on just to gain that super energy on melee kills, but... I don't really use my stasis uh, for melee kills. I use it for mobility, so I'm not really too worried about that. Um, maybe on my Bubble Titan, that'd be the case. Onyx, go ahead and join us so I can show them your hunter in a second. No problem. Oh, jeez. Uh, make sure your audio is included, all right? So, uh, Fresco, since you're running, I'm going to show you what I was running. Uh, you like to run Camp Priest Horn. Um, that's, I'm never going to bash anybody for using whatever exotic they want to use. I think it's really cool. I think it's, I think it's just completely unique, and it's silly. And it makes me laugh every time I see that thing. So, what I was using... If you can get this to help you, uh, and I actually saw this build on uh, True Vanguard. Uh, he called it Ride the Wave. It, it just cracked me up, so I had to use it. Um, so and you, I'll post this on YouTube so you can watch this again later. But I go to Thermite Grenades on my Solar Subclass, obviously Towering Barricade, and I use Bottom Tree, which is going to give me those uh, sunspots, <laughs> right? And then for my kinetic, I was using Traveler's Chosen. It's a really good, really good sidearm. Whenever you get kills, you could either keep it going just to get that handling and everything else moving, handling stability, and and, and one other piece I can't remember. Or you can long Target press X. X. That's what it is. Thank you. It becomes a beast. You can like long hold kills. X. Yeah. Or, like I said, you can, you can hold down X for a long period of time, and you'll absorb that energy, and that's going to give you your abilities back. All, all three, grenade, melee, and uh, class ability. And then for my grenade launcher, I was using Deafening Whisper, which is a waveframe grenade launcher. Um, as far as, like, yeah, Marty, you can keep the going. rounds of it, yeah, you can, but Marty's got Sunset still Oh, I did? Marty's, yeah, Marty's to get Sunset it. Marty's was the one he used before, but yeah. definitely wish it was not bad. Can you get from mine? I got surplus. You can, yeah. You Ooh. can get a mission on this one too. I think. That's what I was asking. If you can get it on Whisper. Yeah, but this one I run. I have surplus and wellspring. And what's nice about that is if I get a kill with this grenade launcher, wellspring gives me uh, ability energy as well throughout all three of them until one's full, right? So I got two weapons. They're just feeding me ability energy so I can keep getting my shield back and I keep getting my grenades back and my melee. So I don't really have to worry about specking too much into strength 
resilience or uh, discipline. And then heavy is whatever you want to run. Um, if you're going to run a grenade launcher, I personally would run quick access sling. Um, if you don't have this one, wait for Banshee to get it, but that allows you to swap your weapon a lot faster once you empty the magazine. And a grenade launcher is one shot, it's empty, and you swap to your sidearm, which clean them up. And then obviously, you know what Kepri Sworn does. The thing just throws out a, a, a nasty, nasty fireball yeah. out of your shield. <laughs> And so, you know, I run the thermite grenade so I could chuck a grenade down. I got three ways of fire coming out of that thing. I got my fire grenade launcher, and I got my shield. I mean, dude, you just rain fire the whole time. Then if you get a bus. kill, exactly. So as you get a kill with your shield, you get a kill with your grenade, you get a kill with your melee. Now you got sunspots going. And then you're doing extra damage, and you're getting healing on your solar kills. And if you stand just, uh, sunspots, you get ability cool them. Yep. So you're just, dude, you're just getting abilities going. So if you can get that, that grenade launcher, and if you can get the Traveler's Chosen, I mean, that's, uh, that's the way I would run that, that helmet that you're running. Where did you get those exotic weapons? Traveler's Chosen? What's that? Where did you get those? Traveler's Chosen is exotic. Yeah, you can get it out of the kiosk right now, I think. <laughs> and then the, the Deafening Whisper comes from the Hunts. Uh, that the crow does in the Tingle Shore. Yep. And if you have your lure upgraded, you can slot it to exclude certain perks, so you can have a better chance of getting a better roll. Yeah. Um, so that's basically my build, in a nutshell, and then that's what I would run for you, since you like to use that Capri's horn. That's what I would kind of... That should be your end goal. And I'll... Uh, I'll put it together or take a screenshot for you of everything and I'll send them to you so that way you got a picture of it or you could watch this video and screenshot it yourself mm -hmm. um, either way so that's what I would run for you that's a basic overview on, on my Titan I already talked about really briefly I touched on what you run Onyx but I'm gonna let you go in detail about it so other people can see um, you wanna hop into a private if you, and I can demonstrate we can, but I want to talk about it first. Okay. Let's let's look at your stats. Let's look at what you run, and then and then we can go into a private after this and demonstrate them how they work. Because yours has really really mean synergy, but a lot of people don't run it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, more than once they see that run it. And, and we were talking about earlier about you know just because there's a meta doesn't mean you have to run the meta. Precisely. Yeah, the closest thing the closest thing to meta that I've ever gotten is using chaperone and bottom dollar and that's just because bottom dollar is a 120 you know what I mean um, chaperone is a is a wonderful wonderful shotgun but a lot of people don't use it and I, I was saying earlier just because people are they just don't they like the ease of use of, of buckshot you know exactly. slugs are punishing if you miss your shot you know you, you can you can die <laughs> so um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you take over for anyone who doesn't know hey I'm Onyx He's a good buddy of mine, excellent PvP, or good person to learn from, and he'll piss you off. <laughs> so go ahead. Alright, so my base build is Chaperone, and I crutch True Sight. My favorite thing to do. So with Ray the Wraith, we hit a crouch precision shot, you turn invisible and you can see people through walls for about 3 seconds, and your melee range is increased, so that ties in later with the, um, uh, with the Chaperone. But the Chaperone's kind of the key part to this along with Spectral, because you can hit some pretty deep shots with it. Without the perk active, it's got a 12 meter kill range, and with the perk active, it's got a 15 kill. And what you can do, you don't have to be crouched to hit the headshot. You can slide around a corner, and while you're sliding, that counts as you being crouched. You hit the headshot, you turn invisible. And then if you can keep chaining that and keep rocking it, people don't know where you're coming from. You can see them, they can't see you. You're not on the radar because you're invisible. And a cool little tip about invisibility is if you are invisible and then your timer's about to run out and you don't want people to know the where you're at, you're like in a hard spot, kind of stuck behind enemy lines, you can crouch and you remain off of the radar until you shoot, use an ability, or stand up. And if you, you can continue, like you can crouch walk and stuff like that, but if you, if you need that, you've got it now. But 
Honestly, I think the best way to demonstrate this build is just hop into a private match and I can show you what it's about. A lot of people I know have seen it. But the guy who pulls it off the best is um, Drewski. That's where I learned from, it's who I watched to get this build. He rocks it with um, uh, Chaperone and Twilight Oath. So he's got two one-shots, he's got a close range and a long range. But now it's kind of a little harder to do that unless you want to give up traction. But if you're running without traction, you're probably doing it wrong. In my opinion, yeah, least. that's what we talked about earlier yeah. too. You have to, especially especially with crossplay coming eventually. Dude. They're actually not going to have. Uh, we're not going to be up against PC people. Only if you're playing with a PC. Oh person. yeah, only if you're playing. That's what I said. If you happen to be playing with a PC guy, then you're you're already going to be on an uneven playing field. Right. But at least traction gives you a a, a, a fighting chance, not a win, <laughs> but a fighting chance. Yep. Um, real quick before we go in there, let's talk about your stats and, and, and why you run what you run, as well as the exotic that you choose to run with it and why that is. And All right. We'll yeah. Jump into a private match. So I run the uh, Dragon Shadow. It's definitely one of the more top tier exotics in the game. I'd say it's kind of slept on amongst like the common people for just the casual play. But what it does is it allows you to run Gambler's Dodge, which is the um, the dodge where if you roll or if you dodge close to an enemy, you get your melee back. And the I, I say that dodge is superior even without Dragon Shadow just because it changes your hitbox more than the other dodge. Like you actually do a roll versus a little kind of like skip hop thing. And then with the Dragon Shadow when you run that, it reloads all three of your weapons and then gives you increased weapon handling, uh, movement speed. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what it does. So there's kind of a thing you could do with um, Dragon Shadow. You don't have to run max mobility. You can run like five or six mobility, and when you proc the perk, that'll make you. I think it gives you plus 50 mobility, so you'll have that 11 second dodge cooldown, even with a five stat on your mobility. But I personally like to run 100 because I'd like to have my dodge cooldown like always at 11 without any chance. So like if I dodge with 50, and then I end up end up dying right after that, you're not going to get the same cooldown, and I don't even know what it is with. Um, what if I swap really quick here and try to get it down to 50? I'll tell you what it's at. Um, 40, well, okay, so 40 is a 24 second. So you can kind of see the difference there. But I recommend running 100 mobility in Hunter. But then I also run 93 recovery so I can, you know, get, get in and out of fights when I need to. But I don't know. Resilience is better right now. Resilience is definitely good. It's a good counter to stasis. Good counter to 120s. And I always tell people they should shoot for a minimum of 50 if they can. Right? Yeah. You know what I, mean? I think I it's run 60. five to. I think it's five to seven is where you want to be. Yeah, but I run two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. But for the most part, you're visible like 99% of the time, so it's 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 yep. pain in the butt just to get you anyways. Uh, and I always recommend to people, and just so they, just so you know what I'm saying, if you want to correct me, you can. But I always tell people for recovery, they should be running nine to ten, eight at a minimum. Seven. Um, I think it's seven to eight is where you want to be, but I can see why you say that though, for sure. Especially like in comp or yeah. trials, you yeah. know what I mean. You want to get that recovery right. going. Six v six, like I said, some of this stuff doesn't matter as much, right? But or competitive settings, you want to be able to get your stuff going. Alright, you ready to talk about private? We can. Real quick, before we do, I want to just discuss Karma's real fast. Karma, uh, Karma I'm just going to I'm just gonna run through yours real quick. Is that alright? <laughs> I, I always liked Karma's build. Uh, she used to have this at 100 and 100. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So that changes. But either way... Yeah, either way, uh, she's running 50 resilience, 57, almost 60, but 57 is, is still good. Mobility's not as high because it's not as much of a priority for Warlocks. Recovery is, is at 97. If we can get that to 100, awesome. If not, 90's not bad at all. Her discipline's at 40, and her intellect is at 97 as well. If we're able to get that to 100, that'd be awesome, but 90's just is, is great. And strength doesn't matter as much on warlocks as it does for titans. Um, and then she's running geo mags, and uh, we'll work on the mods and stuff later. I know she just got to do PVE, but um, she's running geo mags for for uh, 
Chaos Reach. Gosh darn, I'm, I'm, Chaos Reach. There we go. I'm brain farting. I'm like, dude, what is it? <laughs> that okay, you will be building mod on your chest plate. You could change the, that. The crutch that I use. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you do have a mobility mod. Yeah, you can swap that out. But, but then I lose my mobility. Until I can get better armor with the better stats that I want, this is... Yeah, that's fine. You, yeah. run, you run how you want. Um, but either way, I wanted to touch, because this is, a, I think, a, a solid Warlock setup. Uh, especially for Chaos Reach. Very good. Yes. Very, very, very good setup. I Thank you. I see Karma come back and get us with, with supers and, and comp and trials before anybody else does. And like I said earlier, if you get your super first, that could be a big turning point in the game. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and step into a private match. We'll do a few minutes of a private match so everyone can see uh, the two setups. And uh, in Fresco, I'll also use your setup <coughs> in its more perfect form. So you can see what that looks like using all three of them for flames. But you're going to get to see, if you haven't seen it already, you're going to get to see Onyx's... Uh, Invisibility. So I always like telling how we met. Because <laughs> what? So we were in a we were we were playing Crucible when I met Onyx <laughs> Fresco. And uh and I'm running bubble Titan with a chaperone and we must have killed each other. I don't know how many times. I think I was we one of the only ones killing him. Yeah, we were going back and yeah. we were targeting each other. Yeah, and I didn't see anybody else kill this guy, and I was like, "This guy's using a chaperone. I gotta, I gotta do better than him." So I'm like, I'm gonna try to kill him, dude. And, and I started dropping bubbles on him, and then he'd freaking pop his his spectral blades, and kill me, and it pissed me off. And uh, it ended up being a really good game. So I, I was getting ready to send him a message. Oh, are we not fighting? Not yet. We're about to. Okay. We'll have everyone get in the middle so they can see what your what your does. Come school. And so. I get ready to send a message about GG, love the chaperone, and I got he sends me a message first. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, he, I'm going to read it verbatim, because I've been saying it wrong, but he straight up goes, uh, let me pull it up, people are going to see this all our chat. I don't think they see this. Goes, but. Okay, good. He says, not too shabby with the chap, but you play <laughs> like you have no thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> and then our friendship blossomed. Exactly. <laughs> It's just that's what happens when you don't get, you know, butt hurt, butt hurt about things. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and start with you, Onyx. Go ahead and pull out your chaperone and show them what happens. You can kill me and, and let them watch it. Yeah. Um, Fuck. I'm just gonna slide around the corner. So like, I'll do, I'll fine. do like this. So with your crouched, and you just had a headshot, you go invisible. So you can watch for a little bit, and then um, I'm gonna wait for a second to demonstrate the invisibility thing. So if I just stay crouched, I should remain off your radar unless they've changed it. I don't move mm. on your radar. No. Nope, you just popped to my radar right there oh, for shit. a second. Okay, well, then I guess I lied. Well, anyway, so yeah, with being crouched, if you if you can hit a, like a slide flick headshot... Okay, we're gonna try it one more time. I'm fucking terrible. Let me get you nice and low. You can slide and hit the headshot and go invisible. That's cool. Yeah. And then I can see you guys through the walls. It's deadly. So you can play the his, his, Yep. He can see through his Wraith Metal Mail, gives him a, a longer slide distance. Yep. Movement, and, your, uh, your movement speed actually affects your slide distance. That's kind of like a little hidden tip, like tech perk yep. thing. It's like why Dune Marchers works, because Dune Marchers affects your movement speed. And then it also your slide. slide. Yep. But... Go ahead and uh, do it again, and, and, and so that he can watch it. Go ahead and do it to Karma. Karma, go ahead and be our test dummy machine right there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and then he's already invisible, and then he'd be sliding around oh my God. getting you and me right after. Yeah. The little mm -hmm. thing practice on with a hunter is, like, your slide and then dodge back to cover. So, like, if I... Oh, uh, yes, yeah, stand right there for a second. So, like... What you can do is you can um, you can sprint at a wall, slide, come and hit the headshot and roll out, and then you're fine. You got the pick for your team, you can kind of play safe, then you can see where people are at, call it to your team, or we're going. I guess we're going. 
<laughs> nope, I just wanted to kill you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Alright, so, so like for what I'm using, I, I'm mainly using Grenade Launch and Dead Man's Tail, so I'll usually come in at you. I just gotta hit you. Done. And I can just one tap you like that. It's mine. Give me that, you <laughs> goblin. <laughs> Never getting it. So, another thing too is if I run sunspots, uh, the dead man's tail, if I'm in the sunspot, turns into a two shot. I'm gonna be right back. Uh, go ahead, scout rifle. Um, so, let me go get my special that somebody wasted down here. And I'll be spawn, and I'll show you exactly what I do for the most part. And, you know, depending on who I'm fighting, I'll, I'll either go up or I'll go down. I'll go high or I go low. Sometimes I like to just go low. <laughs> you know, I got you both weak. <laughs> Some people are stacked up. You know, I can use that green launcher, bust your shields, and then it's an automatic one tap. Or if I'm charged with light, like in that moment, <clears throat> it's a it's a straight up kill. So that's it on that one. So now let me put on this other stuff. And uh, and let's show you what yours would look like if you were to get it set up all the way. I gotta I gotta kill you to get that ability regen. Bam. So I already got my abilities after switching my subclass and I went from zero to full after two kills. Just to give you an idea. So, if I'm coming in with this wave lead, I can either grenade you, my grenade kills you, my shield can kill you, and look, you created a sunspot when you died. So now I'm on a sunspot. I can come over here, and since I'm on the sunspot, and I got a sunspot kill, now I'm just chaining sunspots. See, now I'm on a new sunspot. And you can just keep chaining it, chaining it, chaining it, which is why sunspots are, are, are so good. So I come over here, I got Sun Warrior. Damn, I got a new sunspot. And I can just keep going with it. So, I got my grenade launcher. I can pop this, hit you with that grenade, kill you. And I just got a new sunspot for my shield killing you. Sorry, all my kittens broke out. Don't hurt me. Sorry. It's a jailbreak. <gasps> oh no. Bam, sunspot. Bam. Oh, Bam. Oh, Bam. Sunspot. <laughs> yep. So that's that's kind of what you're going for. Let's go. And then, like I said, I get the ability regen from both my grenade launcher and my my sight arm. Oh 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Sarge is gonna kill me. Sarge thinks he's gonna kill me. <laughs> so, uh, when you decide to watch this back, you can see it. But that's that's what you're going for. If you really want to have like a, a <laughs> good, good freaking uh, get those one. Yeah, get those oh, spots going. I'm he's that ability. <laughs> he stole it. Oh yeah, I was like, why didn't I get my ability regen? Because <laughs> I <I'm> took <expected>. it. <laughs> exactly. He killed me. Oh, oh no no, there's two poker. Oh, <laughs> mm. Yeah, see, this is this is where this is where I'd pop a bubble. Just chilling, man. Going around. You're saying I? Ah. Oh. Wow. Thanks for us going with this. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, Fresco, I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, are you interested in that build at all? Because if you are, kill me, kill me, kill me. Kill me. <laughs> I have to be um, you. If you are, that's that's definitely the, <gasps> oh. I think, the way to run it. You know what I mean? Just constantly get your abilities. Mm -hmm. That's something for you, Onyx. Constantly have that. Constantly have your abilities coming back to you. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And you're just throwing flames out. You're just throwing flames out all day, dude. Whether it's your grenade, your shield, your grenade <coughs> launcher. <laughs> you ready for this game to be over, Sarge? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to end it. Damn. Oh, I thought it was Such a good push. Damn. Alright, give me a minute. Where's... Oh, where's I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Oh, no. I'm definitely not running to middle right now. Definitely not running the middle. Okay, so you're definitely running not. to the middle. Got it. Got it. Okay. Oh, that was a good little... Where did you go, bro? Lost your ass. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to come kill me, not him. He was right there. I thought you were going to fight. Oh, I was dead either way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Oh. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I think that was a, a good base run over. We got to cover a warlock, we got to cover a hunter, a really good hunter, and a titan setup. Uh, two titan setups. And and honestly, dude, like I, I'm not kidding when I say it. you can whoever watches this later or even just now, just so you know, press go on. And I know I've told I know I've told Carmen this. You can run whatever exotic you want to run, and you can build around it. And some people might look at it, I might even look at it and go, ugh, why that exotic? But it's <laughs> it's whatever you want to run. It's it's to me it's about having fun. I mean, this isn't this isn't a tournament. This isn't Call of Duty tournament with a million dollars in line. This is right. Destiny two PvP. Just just enjoy it. You know what I mean? And if the build that you're trying is not working for you, then try something else. It took me forever to find, you know, that I like the chaperone. And then I love the chaperone. And then I found an exotic like to use with it because I like the one-on-one -on -one engagement. So I like using one eye because I'm, I'm aggressive. I, I mm -hmm. like I think sight and ramp parts are great, but I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not passive enough to use it. Um, you know, there's you can run whatever you want to run, and then just make your build around that exotic and around the weapon that you want to use. And then use charge of light mods. A lot of people don't use charge of light mods still to this day. Very good. Very I don't good. know why. I don't think yeah, taking charge at least. You have those for free. Yeah. At a minimum. Yep. You should run those. Like I said, the only reason I'm not running radiant light is because I don't have it. If I had radiant light, I'd have radiant light and powerful friends on. I have powerful friends, but not radiant light. Um, what is radiant light? So. It gives you strength, you strength and then it, and then when you when you pop your super, your teammates get charged with light. I thought it was powerful friends. So it's another. You no know, powerful friends is when you pick up an orb of light, mm -hmm. they become charged with light. When you become charged with light, you also become charged with light. Okay, so yeah, oh, casting your. Okay, so that's what radiant light does. Radiant light does yeah. uh, gives you charge of light when you cast your super, and then. Right or something like that. Radiant yep. light yep. casting your super, and it gives you twenty strength. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 So if everybody, so it's, if you're in a group of people with huge. it, huge, the yeah. charge of light will like kind of bounce between the two of you, or all of you, and you'll get the charge of light stacks. Correct. It, it's in a minimum. You should run high energy fire and take a charge. And if you can run powerful friends and run t radiant light, there's no reason not to. Very there, true. There's, there's just not enough people using them, and I don't understand. And I'm gonna take advantage of it. <laughs> you know, but um. <clears throat> that's huge it can be such a big difference making your teammate charge with light so that he can get the final kill you know he might be completely you know in a losing fight but if he's charged with light he's got a chance to just two tap somebody rather than three shots right makes it nice TTK in half made. almost exactly so <clears throat> that's just a, a a basic overview um if anyone's ever got questions about what exotic they want to run, if they say they really like running, um, you know, Saiyan's Ramparts, well then there's ways to build around it. You don't have to run 100 Resilience to do it. Uh, you know, run 70, 60. But as far as your recovery and everything else, those don't really change that much for me, personally, in my opinion. I don't think you should run 100 resilience and 50 recovery. I just don't see a reason for that. Um, I think 60, 50, 60, or 70 resilience is plenty. Even if you're running a resilience based build, and I think it's plenty. Because there's so many ways to get your class ability back as a Titan um, without using 
without losing out on recovery or strength or or discipline or whatever intellect you know what i mean um so that's 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 what i'd say um onyx i appreciate you stepping in Wait, no I, problem I, appreciate you showing off your build. I know you don't have to, but I do appreciate it. Thank you um, for having me. Absolutely. Karma, I appreciate you showing off your Warlock. I think it's a great, great setup. And then Fesco, I really appreciate you using something not in the norm. <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoy, dude. I get tickled pink seeing stuff like that. You know, Kepri's Horn is, I don't ever see people we're using that thing seriously. It can be a, a, a you know, a situational, but it can be a really good exotic. You know what I mean? Um, so I appreciate all you guys' support. I appreciate all you guys pitching in. Um, if anyone's ever any questions, you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram. You can message us on on Twitch during these streams. No karma helps me out a lot with that because I get confused with this stuff all the time. Um, but we're always, always willing to help. Um, got a good group of people that are willing to help all the time. Even Onyx, he'll just slap you around the whole time. Yeah. But it's all right. Alrighty, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up.